This is Josh White with JW Math Tutoring. Today's video is going to go over the Digital SAT Blue Book Practice Test 5 Module 2A, the easier of the two second modules in the math section. So let's go ahead and get right to it. But life is a dream the calculus could never predict. All right, just before we begin, uh, Digital SAT Practice Test 5, Module 2A, the easier of the two second modules, uh, just want to highlight a couple things. Of course, if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and sign up for notifications. Also, uh, because I like to show as many methods as possible to solve some of these problems, uh, it's uh, possible and very likely that this video will be longer than the allotted time, you know, that you're allowed to complete this uh, section uh, while taking the SAT as an official test. All right, so with that being said, question number one, uh, here we have just a basic uh, graph, and they just want to know, ba essentially, when x is 3, what's the corresponding y value? So just look at the graph. You know, three years after purchase is right here. And so what's the y value going to be? Well, we don't know exactly, but it's somewhere between, you know, 10,000 to 15,000, and there's only one answer choice that has that, which is letter B. So that's it. Can move on to the next question. All right, here we have two intersecting uh, curves on a graph. One line, I guess one line, one uh, looks like an exponential function. And they just want to know what the solution is. So, okay, the solution's right here. It's got an X value of four and a Y value of five. So correct answer is just letter C, four comma five, and that's it. Next, we have a graph and they're asking just what the X intercept is. So the X intercept, of course, is where the graph intersects the X axis, which is right here at five comma zero. So the correct answer for this one is just letter B and nothing more to do. Next up, uh, basic probability question. Two houses are blue on the street, which has seven total houses. What's the probability of selecting a house that is blue? Well, it's just the number of favorable outcomes, i.e. number of blue houses over total number of outcomes, which would be seven because there's seven total houses. So just two over seven, two sevenths, letter B. We can move on to the next question. Here we have a graph of a function. Looks like a line. Um, and you want to know how would you describe this? Okay, so this is clearly a line. This is uh, therefore not an exponential function. Exponential functions, you know, look like this or possibly like that. And they could also be flipped over. So this is obviously a linear function. And of course, it is increasing because as the x values increase, the y values also increase. Or in other words, it has a positive slope. So therefore, the correct answer to this question is letter A. And we can move on to the next one. All right, number six. Here we have a basic uh, linear equation. We can just solve this by dividing both sides by six, get n equals two. Now be careful, two is not the answer because they don't want the value of n, they're asking for n plus four. So you have to remember to take the two and add four to it to get six. So the correct answer you would wanna fill in here is the number six. Next up, uh, they have a, you have a linear function here, i.e. a line. They just want to know what the value is when this is equal to 10. So you can just go ahead and just plug in 10 for x and then work it out. 4 times 10 is 40, minus 3 is just 37. So correct answer is going to be letter B. I do want to show you uh, just real quick, though, that you can do this entire thing in Desmos. So in other words, you can type the function in in function notation. And then on the next line, you can just do f of 10 and it'll just give you 37 right away as the answer. Not that much quicker you know, than um, just doing it by hand like I did it, but uh, if you run into any issues, you, know, you can of course always do it uh, that way. All right, next question. We have problem number eight. Here we have a graph. It is another uh, line or linear function and they just wanna know the y-intercept. So that's gonna be this point right here, i.e. the point which has an x-coordinate of zero so this is just the point 0 comma negative 4. Correct answer to this is letter B. 
Next up, we have a system of equations, um, and they want to know the solution to it. So first thing, notice that they tell you y equals 28, okay? So therefore, we can automatically get rid of c and d because those do not have y coordinates of 28. So it's either got to be a or b. And then all you have to do is just basically set 28 equal, plug it in, plug 28 in for y and the other one. So set 28 equal to 12x minus 20. And then you can just go ahead and solve this. You get 12x equals 48, and you divide by 12, and you can get x equals 4. So the correct answer is going to be letter A. Now, here's how you could also solve this in Desmos. So we can just go ahead, graph both equations, and just see where they intersect. There's the bottom one. Here is the top one. All right, so let's zoom out here. Where do they intersect? Oh, right here it's highlighted. 4 comma 28. Correct answer, letter A. Don't have to do any work. Don't have to do any you know, calculations. Next up, uh, we have a set of data and they just want to know the range between these values. So all we have to do is just take the largest value minus the smallest value. And when we subtract that, we're going to get 29. So that is the range for these numbers. Um, just type that in. Next up, we have another uh, problem where we have two curves, in this case lines, intersecting. They want to know what the x-coordinate of the solution to this is, okay? So the solution is obviously the intersection point right here. It's at 4 comma 1. So what is the value of x? Well, x is just going to be 4. Next up, number 12. Here you have technically a rational function, and they just want to evaluate this for 2. So we can just take... 2, plug it in for x, then do order of operations. So in the denominator, it's 5 times 2 is 10, and then plus 6, which is 16. On the top, you still have 8. So you could enter this answer in as 1 half, or you could also enter it in as the decimal 0. 0.5. You could also technically enter in 0. 0.5. Um, you know, any of them would be considered correct. Also, again, just want to show you real quick, you can do the exact same thing that we did on the other problem in uh, Desmos, where you just define the function, and then just enter an h of 2, and it'll spit the answer right out, 0.5. Next up, question number 13. So, <clears throat> we have a linear function, i.e. a line, and they tell us a slope, and they tell us a point, and they want to know which equation defines it. So, notice uh, the slope is 39. Okay, positive 39. So that means we're looking for, you know, if you think about y equals mx plus b, we're looking for a line which will have a 39 in front of the x. So a is out, it has a negative 39. b is out, it has 1 over 39. c is out, in front of the x it has just a 1. So by process of elimination, it has to be d. And also notice that that checks because this point right here, the origin 0, 0, that means that the y-intercept, or the b-value, is just 0. So y equals 39x plus 0, just the same as y equals 39x. Correct answer has to be letter D. Next up, question number 14. Here we have a situation that's going to deal with an inequality. So they tell you here basically that the minimum snowfall rate was 0.6 inches per hour, but the maximum snowfall rate was 1.8 inches per hour. And, okay, they want to know which of these inequalities represents, you know, uh, the range of values essentially for how many inches of snow fell per hour. So we're looking for basically all the values that are between 0.6, i.e. that are greater than 0.6, or written this way, 0.6 is less than or equal to uh, s, but also less than or equal to 1.8. So in other words, this is like our min value, this is our max value, and the s, the snowfall rate, we want to be between those two numbers. So correct answer for this one is just going to be letter D. 
Next up, we have question number 15. This is another linear function, and they want to know what the 9 stands for in this, or represents in this problem. This is interpretation of a linear function. Okay, so notice that the function f of t gives the length. All right, so that, so t is number of months, i.e. it's a time, but the f of t, i.e. the y, is the length of this vine, of this plant. So notice 9 is your y-intercept. and So 9 is the value that you get if you plug in 0 for t. You know, it's like your initial value, your starting value. So in other words, 0 months after Tavon purchased it, i.e. at the time he purchased it, the length of the plant is 9. So if you go through these answer choices, it's clearly going to be letter D here. The other things about how much it's expected to grow, like to a maximum length, no, it has nothing to do with that. Uh, nine inches each month, that would be the slope, uh, possibly. That would be like that number, essentially the number of, of uh, inches it grows each month, that's the slope. How long he's keeping the plant for, no, that doesn't apply. It's The correct answer here is letter D. All right, next up, we have a question that deals with some uh, basic geometry. So they just wanna know what's the area of this triangle? Notice, since this is a right triangle, that means our two legs here, three and five, are perpendicular. So we can just use those as our base and our height in the area formula. So you can just do one half times five is the base, let's say, and three is the height. So we just get one half times 15, which is just 15 over two. You could enter the answer in that way, or you could just type in the decimal equivalent, 7.5, and that's it. So correct answer, 15 halves or 7.5. Next up, number 17, we have some points. And they also tell us that these are uh, for a linear function, i.e. linear relationship. So there's multiple ways you could do this. Um, you could do it by hand, find the slope by doing, say, y2 minus y1. I'm going to do 16 minus 11 over x2 minus x1, 2 minus 1. So the slope turns out to be 5. Notice right away, c and d are gone, wrong slope. Now, uh, you can go ahead and you can just go to y equals mx plus b, and we can plug in the slope, and we can plug in one of the points. I'm just going to plug in the point 1, 11. So 1 for x, 11 for y. I get 11 equals 5 plus b. b has to equal 6. So the equation of this line is going to be y equals 5x plus 6. Correct answer is going to be letter A. Now, I'll also show you how you can do this in Desmos. All we have to do is make a table, and you don't have to enter in all three points. You only need technically two of them, so I'm just going to enter two. And then we do a linear regression. And it gives us the slope here is 5, and the y-intercept is 6. So m is 5, b is 6, matches with answer choice A, correct answer, you know, a lot quicker than doing it uh, by hand. Next up, question number 18, we have a system of equations, um, and they want to know what the x-coordinate is of a solution to this. And also notice it says specifically where x is greater than 0. So that means there could be two solutions, and they only want the uh, positive one. So if you were going to do this by hand, I mean, first I'll show you how to do it that way, even though it's a fair amount of, a little bit of work. So since they're both set equal to y, I'm just going to set them equal to each other. And then I'm going to bring the 4x over. This is equal to 0. And then this can just now, this quadratic equation can just be factored. It's going to be x and x minus 6 plus 2. x equals 6 or negative 2. But again, remember, they said they want the value where x is greater than 0. So we eliminate this, and we just have positive 6 as our, um, as our answer. Now, of course, you could also do this in Desmos. So I'll just show you. We go ahead, we graph each function. Where do they intersect? Well, one intersection point is here at negative 2. We already found that. That's not that's not greater than 0, so we don't want that. Here's the other one at 6, 24. So the x-coordinate is 6. This matches uh, what I already found, doing it by hand. So correct answer is just 6. Again, much easier, probably much quicker to do this just in Desmos. 
Next up, problem number 19. Here you have just kind of like a basic uh, proportion type problem. So there's multiple ways you could do this. Uh, one way I would do this is if you set up a proportion where say like you put coaches on top and athletes on the bottom, right? So the ratio of coaches to athletes is one to 26. One coach for every 26 athletes. Now, they wanna know which represents the number of athletes at the track meet. So X represents the number of coaches. So I'm gonna put that over here on the top and I'm just gonna use A to represent the number of athletes. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to solve this proportion for A, which is the number of athletes, and then it's going to be some expression that's going to have a 26 and an X in it. So if we cross multiply here, 1 times A is just A, 26 times X, just 26X. So here's the answer right here. It's 26X. It's letter B. Now, if you're not sure about that, like if you don't, you know, see that, can't enjoy thinking about it, that's fine. Here's how you could use picking numbers to solve it. So all you have to do is just say, okay, I know the ratio is 1 to 26. Let's say that there are 10 coaches, okay? So how many athletes would there be then? And, well, if you notice now, well, 1 times 10 is 10. So 26 times 10 is going to be 260. If you don't see that, just cross multiply it and you'll get A equals, you know, 26 times 10, 260. So now what you would do is you would go through and you would see here, plug in 10 for X and see which of these equals 260. The first one's going to be 10 over 26. No. 260 times 10. 260? Yes. 10 plus 26. 36? No. 26 over 10. 2.6? No. So that's how you could also do this by uh, using the strategy of picking numbers. All right, next up, we have a uh, exponential equation, exponential function. And for this one, uh, there's multiple ways that you could do this. So the easiest way, I think, I mean, you could do picking numbers on this, um, which I'll kind of show in a second. But the easiest way, I think, is just to go to Desmos. Okay. Plot out the original function. So right here. Now, go through the answer choices and back solve this and plug them in and see which of the answer choices is closest to this. So, if I do the first one. All right. Notice these are very, very, very similar. They separate a little bit as, you know, the X values start to get larger and everything. But for the most part down here in this range, they're, you know, almost identical up until about X is maybe like 15 or so. So that one looks pretty close. What happens if I put 21 in for P here? Okay, now notice they've gotten a lot further apart. And if I do 46... Okay, a lot more, a lot further apart, and now 96, even further apart. So the correct answer is going to uh, just going to be not that is going to be A, the 16. Now, an alternate method you could do as well is you could pick a number for x, plug it into the first one. Okay, so we don't want to, I don't want like a y equals here. I'm just going to do so like 1.84. But just pick, you know, whatever, plug in 4 for x, right? You get 1.84. Now, I'm going to go through the answer choices. I'm going to plug in the same um, uh, number for x for each one. And you can see which value. Is closest to the original one. Okay, so now I've plugged them all in. So the original function, if you plug in four for X, you get 1.84, all right? And then go through my answer choices. Which one is closest to that? Well, obviously it's A, 1.81, pretty close to it. The other is 2.14, 4.54, 14.75. Nowhere near as close as answer choice A. So this is just a slight variation where I'm using an actual number to compare them, um, 
rather than just looking at the functions themselves, but this would be an approach you could take as well. All right, next up we have two similar triangles here. So let's just label uh, some of the values they give us. Um, ST, let's see here, is 14. We know this is uh, QP is 15. We know PR is 20. And we know, uh, what's the last thing? QR over here is 25. Okay. What is the length of SR? So similar triangles, you know, with the proportion, uh, corresponding sides are proportional. So ST and QP are proportional, 14 to 15. They are corresponding sides because notice S and T are the first two letters here, and Q and P are the first two letters, so they match up. So now, we want to find SR. So first of all, SR is in the small triangle, so I'm going to put that on top because the 14 is in the small triangle. So what side corresponds to SR? Well, it's going to be QR. So QR is 25. So all we have to do now is go ahead and solve this. We cross multiply. Let's see here. Having trouble... Reading my work, it's going to be 15, oh, just 15 SR is equal to 350. SR is just going to be 350 over 15. Notice they don't even bother to reduce this or simplify it in any way, you know, reduce the fraction at all. So correct answer for this one is just letter A. All right, last question here, number 22 on module 2A from uh, practice test five, digital SAT math. Um, here we have a problem and we're given in this uh, right triangle, two sides. We know B is the right angle. Here, let's put up here, let's put C here. We know AB is 10 root 37. We know BC is 24 root 37. What's the length of AC? So AC is the hypotenuse. All right. So all we have to do here is uh, Pythagorean theorem. It's basically going to be 10 root 37 squared plus 24 root 37 whole thing squared equals C squared or AC squared. Let's call this. I guess technically we shouldn't call it C because it's across from angle B, but just you know, whatever, we'll go with it. All right, so you go ahead and square this out. You get the root 37, just squared becomes 37, 10 squared becomes 100. So this is 3,700. And then let's see here, root 37 squared becomes 37, 24 squared is uh, 576. So this is 576 times 37, whatever that works out to. So if you go ahead, let's see, 21,312, 21,312. All right, so now go ahead, add those two together. We get 25,012, I believe. Let me just double check that. Yep, 2012. And now we're just going to basically have to square root this. So here's the easiest way that I would do this is I would just take the square root of that number and then just approximate it to whichever expression is uh, equal to it. So we get approximately, go ahead and square root this. 158.15. Okay, so now I'm just going to go through the answer choices and just, you know, type them in and see which one's equal to a proud 158.15. 14 squared, 37? No. All right, what about 26 squared, 37? Yes. Notice this matches almost pretty much exactly to the thing, you know, the uh, value that's directly above it. So correct answer here is going to be letter B. Um, 26 times square root of 37. All right, so this was uh, Digital SAT uh, Practice Test 5, Module 2A, the easier of the two uh, second modules, math section, um, the Blue Book app. If you have any questions or comments about this video, please do leave them below. Um, otherwise, 
uh, check out the videos for the other modules from this test, you know, basically module one and then also module 2B, the harder of the two second modules. Um, if you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe uh, you know, to my channel and sign up for notifications. And uh, again, be on the lookout for other SAT and ACT math related content as well.